Hey y'all, welcome back to my series where I'm teaching you how you can take your watercolor paintings and turn them into repeating patterns in Photoshop. Today's video is short and sweet, and I'm just going to show you how you can export these files so that you can upload them to websites like Spoonflower or Society6 or your own social media. Now, I will say there's a lot of different ways that you can do this, as it turns out, in Photoshop. This is just the way that I've done it, and that's worked out for me. All right, now that we've defined our pattern, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to open up one more new file. So we can go to File new. So I'm just going to use that same setting that we used on this last one. So again, that's a 24 inch by 24 inch 300 PPI document. So this is going to be the actual document that we'll use to export our pattern. When I'm using methods other than pattern preview to build my patterns, I don't often do this step. But for pattern preview, sometimes it's a little bit easier to actually bring your pattern into a separate document for the actual export. So before we do anything, what I'm gonna do is go to File, Save As, save it on my computer. And this one, we're gonna call Forest Floor for Export. This one helps me remember why I have this document, what I'm using it for. Then we can click Save. I again save it as a large document format. Okay, now that we've saved this, we can bring our pattern into this file. So if we go to layer, new fill layer, pattern, doesn't matter what you name it, just hit OK. Then we're going to create this new fill layer that's made up of the default pattern, which is all this ivy here in Photoshop. But the magical part here is that you can click this drop down arrow, scroll all the way to the bottom. If you if this isn't your first time doing a pattern, you likely don't have this huge library that I do that somehow got unorganized. <laughs> But if you scroll all the way to the bottom, click on your most recent pattern. This is the one that you just made. You can see it's called Forest Floor Textured White, just like we called it. Click on that and boom, there it is directly in our document. So right now we're at 100% scale. And since this document is the exact same size as the document that we use to create our pattern, this is a perfect repeating tile. Now we can also see what this pattern might look like at other scales. So we can for example, scale way down to see how this looks like when we're repeating it at a much smaller scale. You can also zoom in some more if you'd like to too. This could be a good thing to do if, for example, you're sharing on social media and you don't want to post the entire repeat. For exporting, I'm just going to keep this at 100% scale because I do want to export this as a repeating tile. So hit OK. Now, there's a lot of different ways that you can export these different files. This is just the way that has worked for me. So I go to File, Export, Export Has. And that will open up this menu here, which will give you lots of options for your export. How you export this might depend on your end use. You can export it through this menu as a JPEG, PNG, or GIF, or GIF. Don't come at me. <laughs> Usually I'll just export as a JPEG, um, but it really just depends on the purposes that you're using it for. Now, again, there are lots of other ways to export. This is not the only way, but this is a way that I use a lot and it has worked well for me to upload on sites like Spoonflower, for example. So once I've selected JPEG, I'll bring the quality all the way up. You can keep an eye on the file size here um, and see how that quality impacts your file size. On Spoonflower, I believe it's a maximum of 40 megabytes that you can use to upload a file. Um, and so this one still sits well within that 40 megabyte range. Now, another cool part about this export tool is that you can define the scale right here. So instead of changing the actual pattern like we did when we were in the Photoshop file itself, this scale is going to change the size of the actual file that we're exporting. So Right now, we can see that this is a 7200 by 7200 pixel document. But if we went to a smaller scale, so for example, we could cut this by 50%, you can see that our width and our height actually also cut in half. And so what this means is that the actual repeat itself, all of those actual motifs are going to be smaller at a scale of 50% smaller than in that original 100% scale. So you can use this to export this at lots of different scales depending on your uses on, on what you want it for but right now i'm just going to stick with 100 percent and all you have to do is click export if you watched the earlier video about file setup 
you'll know that we set up these four different folders from the get-go. And so you can imagine that we're going to save our exports in this export folder. I'm, I want to make sure that I'm naming this file in a way that allows me to know which file I'm working with. So force floor is the name of this pattern. We're going to call it textured and white because it has that watercolor paper texture and has a white background. And then I'm going to indicate the size of this one as well. So because it's at 100% scale, I'm just going to call this one large. So if I were to export other sizes of this, oftentimes what I'll do, for example, is I'll export at 100%, 50%, and 25%. So I'm going to save this as large, medium, and small. I can just hit save and your file has been exported. We can confirm this by going into our files and just opening up that JPEG. And there it is. There is our repeating tile. So I hope you found that helpful. And I'm so excited that you now have all of the tools that you need to create your own repeating patterns in Photoshop. So I would love to see any patterns that you do create. And please do tag me on Instagram if you do share them at Pepo Studios. But we're not quite done yet. I have one more video to share in this series where I'm gonna teach you how you can recolor your artwork in Photoshop. This is super exciting because I think a lot of people think that it's really hard or not possible in Photoshop, but you can make some really fun and interesting colorways just with the native tools right in Photoshop. I'm really excited to show you that one. Stay tuned for that. So I will see you there very soon.